interviewer. Interviewer, take, taking your. How, how objective do you think, uh, assuming that there is no such thing as true ob objectivity, it's impossible, how objective should a, an editorial journalist, let us say, like a, as opposed to just a factual reporter, so like on the at 4 o'clock there was a fire on 14th Street, but uh, uh, an editorial journalist. Uh, how objective should he try to be in reporting an event? Or, I think he can come... He uh, have his own opinion in it? Let's take a, an analyst or a commentator, if you will, or whatever, as opposed to a straight reporter. Yeah. I think he can come within a respectable distance of 100% objectivity by taking a given situation, a given story, and trying his Pick best it, to cover all facets of it. Yeah. Turn around and say, there is this about this story. There is also this for you to consider. There is the background of this. This and this and this was said about this. Well, this is where we are. Here's another angle about this story for you to consider. And I don't think it's necessary for him particularly to say, this is the one I believe in, mm -hmm. and I recommend this to you. I don't, I you think... You can do that indirectly, obliquely. Oh, you? you could. But I think we are professional enough that very few of us do that. I, I believe we give the public... give all sides. Oh, you, impossible? Do you think, to give do you all think sides over a period of time, not always in one broadcast because you run out of time. But I think give us 90 days, I believe, on issues current in this country. I believe over television and radio, the public gets all sides. I really do. The dearly beloved and uh, much missed Ed Murrow used to certainly project his own views of a, of a thing, though. Would you say that that was wrong from his point of view or not? Well, Ed, though bless his heart, would usually say, this is my opinion about this. Yeah, yeah. And carefully label it. Yeah. And that's fine. That's mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. But uh, otherwise, I, I think Ed was, was pretty honorable mm -hmm. and oh, very no, decent no, about no, never, more so. yeah. never foisting, yeah. trying to disguise opinion as something yeah. else. Yeah. There, would you say that enough conservative mm -hmm. opinion does get expressed in the, in the media? Yes, it's it's all here. It, it really is. The whole spectrum of communications, it's all there. But people do make the mistake of uh, demanding that it all be represented on one broadcast or with one broadcaster or in one newspaper. Mm -hmm. We must get over that. We must teach our people to read several newspapers and listen to several broadcasts each day if they can. Yes, that's well, true. That's yeah, very if, important. If four friends of yours just got shot down in Ohio, you ain't got time to read 20 papers. You want to know what's happening. It would be indeed. That would be ideal. If it could all be capsulized neatly and succinctly and you would get 100% truth in any one newspaper, or any one broadcast, but it's physically impossible. If you want 100% accuracy and truth, I'm incapable of it, and I think any other uh, broadcaster or uh, organ is incapable of it. So you must read several and listen to several. I think that, uh, if I may say so, that whatever opinion that one forms, whether they're a newscaster or just a private citizen, that they have to be ready to compromise that opinion a little bit because people are polarizing themselves so desperately that there's no meeting. And you have to compromise because there is no kind of sanity or civilization any place in the world without an equilibrium. I don't think a, a meeting demands compromise. I think a meeting demands understanding. Uh, and accepting one, I mean, meeting of, you know, uh, right wing, left wing, whomever and whomever, that's on the other team you're talking about, yeah. polarization. Uh, I don't think they have to compromise. I think they have to be willing to listen to the other person. They have to, I do think they have to compromise because I don't believe that in this world today, in the There's kind of technology of that we're living in, There's that it's possible to live apart. You have to live together or not at all. I don't think they're trying to live apart. I, I mean, think, we I have that, to integrate I think to our live country. Together. I think they're trying to live together, but they're also trying to be true unto themselves. And I think that's possible. Yes, uh, I, I agree with that, but you can't stop technology and science. I mean, uh, uh, either. That's and right. that's what's throwing the whole thing into a perpetual uh, state of chaos, in my opinion. I think I can put this in a nutshell by saying that we'll be back after this message. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, this has been fun. I've enjoyed this. Thank you, Janice, Mr. Fairbanks, Mr. Huntley, and Miss, uh, what's her name? <laughs> and uh, George Papard, B.B. King, and Ruby D. and Dr. Bergen Evans will be here tomorrow night. And thank you. Let's all get together again some night. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Boy speaking. Good night.